Yet another new Mega Drive game has dropped and this time it's completely free. This is Hayato's Journey, an unofficial sequel to Kenseiden on the Master System. Now this was developed by Master Linkue, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Some cool artwork here imitating a Japanese cover but there's no physical release. I would love one though. There's a link below where you can download this for free but I encourage you to make some sort of donation when you do, even if it's just a few dollars. Hayato's Journey is an action platformer in which you hack and slash your way through the levels using your trusty katana. This was developed using the Scorpion Engine, a game creation tool for the Mega Drive and Amiga. It has a great many similarities with the original Ken Seiden, you'll recognise enemies and bosses, but the whole thing has been made from scratch. Having said that, the game does borrow assets from several other games including the Shinobi series. And the spirit of the original is definitely here with a lot of the design, complete with that cool way that Hayato runs. This game has impressed me way more than I thought it would, greatly exceeding any expectations I had for a free game. At the main menu under options you can set the number of lives and continues you have, listen to the game's music tracks, and under info you can view the moves. This cycles through very fast, which is a bit annoying, I'd prefer it to stay on screen until I press something to progress. As it stands, I had to watch this several times to get all the moves down. After a brief introduction, you're into the action. There's a fair bit of English, but you'll get the gist. Basically, you're after an evil warlock who killed your master and kidnapped your girl, tale as old as time. The game opens to a burning temple. As I said, there are enemies from the original, as well as familiar looking environmental objects and backgrounds. The fire effect here is really nice, with the red glow of the flames on the wood in the foreground, which also adds some parallax. The whole game has some good parallax effects actually. So the moves, you're armed with your Sword of the Dragon King which is swung using the A button for a regular slash, B is jump, and you can also press down and jump to jump down from platforms, and C fires arrows should you have any. Press down and A to block, up and A does a Kara Takewari which is a more vertical slash than just pressing A alone. Forward and up or mode on a six button pad does a Ran Chateau and down forward and A does a Shinku Kiri. These two are harder to describe so I'll leave the explanation to the on screen demonstration. Jump and then while you're in the air press a direction and then jump again to perform this spin attack. Pressing any direction on the D-pad seems to work. This is very powerful indeed and will prove invaluable for some boss fights. It's also an absolute necessity for bridging some of the larger gaps in the harder platforming sections. Z or up and C on a three button pad performs a special attack called Hurricane Splendor. This fires a wall of magic either side of Hayato. The number of these specials you have are indicated by the lightning icon and number at the top right of the screen next to your number of arrows. Number of lives and your energy i.e. health are at the top left. You have six hit points per life. Items to collect include arrows, the hurricane splendors, as well as health refills, extra lives and a sword upgrade. When you collect this sword, you'll see a sword icon added next to the arrows at the top. This upgrades your sword to shoot projectiles. Not only does this produce a rather satisfying sound, but it's extremely powerful. Should you get hit while it's equipped, you'll drop it and it'll bounce away. You have to be quick to pick it up again before it's too late. Keeping this equipped makes a lot of the levels so much easier, not to mention the bosses. It lets you keep enemies at a safer distance. If you die, you'll be reset to the start of the section you're on, and you'll lose the sword power up, but you'll keep any arrows and hurricane splendors you have. Each level has a few sections, including mid-level and end-of-level boss fights. There are at least six levels because that's as far as I've got. This boss kept kicking my ass. Some boss fights reset you all the way to the start of the section if you die, and some just reset you to the start of the boss fight, so that can be quite frustrating if you are set back a fair bit. As I mentioned, the sword power up and the mid-air spin attack will prove invaluable for boss fights, especially those that involve attacking the enemy's head. The main bulk of the game is a hack and slash platformer. Some of the platforming elements are quite tricky actually, especially those where you're jumping into the unknown, i.e. you can't see far enough ahead to anticipate an enemy. These bits often have to be learnt through trial and error, so you know what to expect. Level 2 was quite a pain at first for this reason, and there are numerous ledges from which you can plummet to your death. There's a good mix of enemy types, but these are repeated throughout the game, so once you've sussed out their movements and attacks, you know how to best deal with them. 
In Hayato's journey, it's good practice to keep on going, because if you revisit a section of the screen or backtrack even slightly, then all enemies in that spot respawn. Aside from the regular gameplay, there are a few unique stages. One where you're on horseback, which just involves jumping over obstacles at the right time, and a couple where you're running from a boulder or giant snowball a la Indiana Jones. These break up the game a bit, but aren't the most fun in terms of gameplay. Graphically, this game is really quite impressive, especially considering it's a hobby project. The levels are varied and detailed, there's tons of parallax scrolling, and some really nice animated touches with both background and foreground details. The stages don't ever feel repetitive, and there are some out there locations too, like the back of a dragon, which reminded me of Golden Axe. The music is very Mega Drive-y indeed, and rather good, created by Edmo Caldas. And unlike some indie Mega Drive games, the music all fits thematically. The sound effects are really cool actually, including the sound the sword makes that I mentioned earlier, which emits a thrum almost reminiscent of a lightsaber. There are some great Japanese voice samples too for when you collect the various items. Overall, the presentation is very good indeed. What a great treat for us Mega Drive fans, and all for free. Nice to see such an accomplished passion project come to the console. Like I said though, do donate if you're able, as the developer really deserves it. And if the dev is watching, I'd happily pay more for a physical copy of this, as it's a great addition to the already extensive indie library. I'll shut up now and play a few gameplay clips. Let me know what you think of Hayato's journey, and thanks for watching.
とさん入国とか関スペシャルイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイエスイ